Go. I'm never going to have a better call than this. Hello. Oh my gosh, I got You're not bad. You cannot be a push. Nobody is going to respect you. We got to get going on that. Be comfortable when you're yeah. six, that's creepy. You're also stunting your life. I don't know if that was helpful. All right, welcome to Work Like a Girl. This is where you're going to hear from people about how to be great at work, not just go to work. Jillian. Hi, Erica. What's up? I had a question for you. And basically, I started a job about a year ago at a startup and I actually almost took a job at WWE instead. But to your whole point of the whole like bigger companies will always be their thing, I decided to take a risk and join this startup. Um, and when I first joined the company, I had a really great group of peers that I was working with and we all got along really well and worked well together. Um, but flash forward to now, I recently got promoted and now I'm managing several of those people who mm. I was monsters with. Um, and I'm experiencing some growing pains. So I was just wondering what advice you had for me as a new manager who I've never been a manager before, number one, but two, now I'm also having to manage people who started off first as my peers and my friends. Oh, that's tough. I love that. I used to yeah. <laughs> I used to manage people my age and, and my peers when I was at, I worked at a bunch of ad agencies and I would lie how old I was. I said that I was the age of 28 from pretty much the time that I was 22. I just lied. I just said I was 28 years old, even though it was probably fairly no. obvious that I wasn't. Um, anyway, so one is being a manager is tough and being a manager of your peers is super tough and all eyes are going to be on you. And this is your, this is like, this is your time to shine. So my advice to you would be, um, you've got to, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of like insecurities rambling around your head and like rattling around in there of, you know, what so-and-so must <laughs> think or such and such, or they're second guessing me, or they're not going to respect my authority, or, you know, somebody would have done this differently, or what if I fuck up? Like, I'm sure all that stuff is like, that conversation is just very loud in your head. You got to quiet that conversation. You got to like, you got to give like a big shut the fuck up to all those voices. And you've got to focus on what is the vision for your team? Um, what is it that you want to accomplish? What is it that your team stands for? What's the DNA of your team? What are the things you value? What are the what are the KPIs or the performance things you're going to crush? Um, people mm -hmm. buy into vision, and it doesn't matter how old you are or how much experience you have. Like everybody can have a vision, so you got to state your vision because ultimately, to make a okay. team work, they got to buy into the vision. You got to buy into that you're going to win, right? Or you got to buy into what mm -hmm. you're going to accomplish or the difference you're going to make. So I think the first thing is what I what I would think about doing is like I'm sure you're having team meetings and it would be a really good use mm -hmm. of your time to are you having team meetings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. So you got to have team meetings and then you got to have one-on-ones. Um and you got to be religious about both of them. One of the things that people like in a leader or a manager is consistency. It's super hard to be consistent, especially as a young manager. I still struggle with it now, and I've been managing forever. But you got to be, you got to set the vision, and you've got to set the tone, and you have to set the pace. So, so you got to do all all those things. In my experience, there is going to be a moment pretty soon, or it may already be happening, where someone's not going to buy into you or you have a really low mm -hmm. performer, or you have the person who's kind of like mailing it in and not doing anything, that's a test. And the test is, are you going to keep that person or are you going to get rid of that person? And your bosses are mm -hmm. watching that test and your team is, is watching that test and your peers are watching that test. So I think one of the best things from... I honestly think one of the best things you can do is to get rid of the dead weight and to do it pretty quickly. It's going to be hard. It's going to be super painful. It's going to be awkward. You're going to feel weird about it. And then you got to bring in fresh mm -hmm. blood and you got to bring fresh blood that's loyal to you and that is going to want to work for you. So I think the biggest thing is like you just got to keep going and you got to do your best and you have to quiet the voice in your head and you have to take absolutely zero disrespect from the people who are working for you. You've got to just set a strong pace and message. If people fall behind, that there's consequence for that. If people fuck up, there's consequence for that. If people crush it mm -hmm. and they do amazing things, there's big reward for that. 
And a reward could be flowers. A reward could be just a very public accolade. So you, you got to really think of yourself as someone who is steering, you know, steering the boat or driving the bus. And it's your job to make sure you have the right people on the bus. They're doing the right things. They have their uniform. They're fed. They're hydrated. They're ready to play. They've gone through practice. And then you got to kick the people mm-hmm. off the bus who don't belong there. I think that's mostly where I'm struggling is I think I'm being too nice. Um, so the whole point of like setting consequences and sticking to them will be really helpful. Yeah, you cannot be a pushover, Mariah. Nobody is going to respect nice. And it doesn't mean you have to be a bitch. Thank you. But oh, you want to get off the phone, don't you, Mariah? Mariah's oh, no, like, no, I've gotten no, enough advice. <laughs> all right. No, but that's it. That's no, all I got. To talk to you. <laughs> that's all I got. You have a great day, Mariah, and go be tough. What's up, Steve? Uh, Dave. Oh, what's up, Dave? <laughs> finance Dave from Montreal here. How are you? Shut up. It's Finance Dave. I love that. <laughs> uh, I was just, I was looking more about, like, how do you stay motivated? You know, I love your philosophies and everything, and, like, I'm a huge, huge fan of uh, your wisdom and everything, but it's like, you know, after a while, uh, you know, through the grind, I love what I do, don't get me wrong, but certain point i'm like i just want to go to mexico for like two months you know like like how do i sort of what do you do to sort of stay motivated and re-energize uh even though you do what you like what you do but a certain point like you know i don't have much in the tank sometimes especially with kids at home i think it's hard to keep stuff in the tank you know what i mean like everybody gets a little depleted also like at this point in the year in montreal or in the east coast like it's super easy to be like (laughs) fuck it's going to be cold and miserable and rainy or slushy or icy or snowy for absolutely ever and everything kind of starts to feel gray so um one i think it's totally normal to feel depleted or to feel overwhelmed or just to feel uninspired i think everybody kind of gets to that point at at gets to that place at some point for me you know I love to work like I'm so interested in people and I'm interested in the projects that we're working on Um, I'm interested in doing new things I'm interested in fixing the things we're doing Um, I I play a lot of games with myself where I'm I'm like okay like can I get these 10 things done today or can I I have an idea for something can I activate on it Um, And I think you have to, one thing that I try to do, and my team complains about this, is I always try to move my goal goal post farther. So I'm like, okay, if I'm getting close to the goal post, that means I'm going to get a little bored and comfortable. And I always worry about being complacent and then I start to get nervous. So I'm like, how do I keep moving my goals forward? How do I keep moving, um, you know, how do I keep moving my ball down the field or, you know, my puck down the, down the ice? So that that is I think something good for you to do which is what are your goals at work where are you against those how much further could you stretch those I think the third thing is you got to like exercise or do something for your life that makes you feel good and gives you energy that's outside of your kids and outside of your job and outside of like going out on Friday night and getting drinks so like what is that thing? Is there a project you can have that's either your body or your mental health or, you know, you may, I love plants, right? Like I'm oddly into plants. So it's like, I'll, you know, can you think about growing plants or nurturing plants or you might like art or you may want to have a podcast or, you know what I mean? So like, what are the projects that you can have that are outside of your work that give you energy and then you can carry that energy with you into work? Oh, that sounds great. Uh, definitely stay, you know, taking care of my physical, you know, physical well-being, I think is something that I've neglected, I think, in terms of the lockdowns up here. But, uh, you know, good old uh, hockey, uh, getting back on the ice is, uh, is definitely missed. Uh, yeah, like uh, go get in your men's league there. hockey. Like I miss hockey. I used to play hockey all the time. And it's like everybody gets a little fat and doughy over the – I feel like everybody's gotten a little fat and doughy over the pandemics. And it's like, mm, like <laughs> let's get fit. So go get fit, Dave. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, Erica. Hi, my name is Aideen. I'm a huge fan of the show. Thanks for taking my call. Hi, Aideen. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. So I'm a third-generation food manufacturer. Um, I've It's been a family-owned business since 1945. Um, and, you know, 
I love what I do, but I need to figure out an exit plan. I'm 53. I've got some passion projects that I'd like to get involved in. I still want to work, um, but I'm looking into like the merger and acquisition landscape, um, venture capitalist, sure. or you know some synergistic business to take me over. How do I c- move this goal forward and communicate this plan to my employees so I don't freak them out or lose any long-term employees? I'd like to keep them all employed, and that would be part of any package that I put mm-hmm. together, but I don't want them to freak out if they think I'm you know, trying to sell a stake in the company and go on to the next thing. How do I lead them through this whole process? That's such a great question. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. So here's my two cents. Um, first is, one, it's, it's a really good thing for a company to have fresh ideas and more capital or, you know, new owners or, you know, it creates like it's kind of like an injection into the company, right? When Penn National bought a stake in Barstool Sports, like that was a shot in the arm for us. Like it opened so many doors. It, it set us on a new trajectory. It created, it created a path, you know, and not everybody's going to want to be on that path, right? So you've got to... You as a CEO have to understand that, which is like not everybody's going to want to be along for the ride. Um, Some people just liked it the way it was. Some people only like you. And some people don't want to be part of something bigger. They don't want to, you know, they want to deal with the bullshit of new owners and all that kind of stuff. So one, just, just assume that that's a fact. That doesn't diminish the reality, which is that this is, a, is the next phase of this company And that you always wanted to build something that could achieve X. Like, you know, your vision was to, you know, build a food, you know, food company that ultimately you would find in like whatever, like insert, insert sentence here about what the vision is. Um, I would start to communicate that to people that you trust and I would get buy-in on the bigger vision for the company and where this brand could go. And I would get people hyped up for that. Um, because then when you go find a venture capitalist or you find a private equity person or ultimately a strategic investor or an acquirer, your team is bought into where the company is going and they feel part of it. And that if you enable them to be part of it, part of that process, They'll feel more ownership of it so that you can go and do your passion projects and they can stay and run a company. Like what an awesome, what an awesome way to develop a career, right? Like we've had a lot of people leave here. There's a lot of attrition going on. You must see this in your business too. And every time someone leaves, like I'm sad for a little bit. And then I'm also like, ooh, but what a great opportunity for change. What a great opportunity for a new leader. What a great opportunity for someone what a great reason why somebody should work here, that they can grow themselves and develop themselves and be part of a future. And, you know, that's what, that's what a career is all about. But I think the biggest piece of it is you have to set the vision for where the company is going and what the company is and why taking this next step is the right step. And you may say like, look, like, I've given my all, I've given my blood, I've given my sweat, I've given my tears, I've given my time. And it's time for somebody else to bring fresh energy or fresh eyes or guns, money and steel. That's what we needed, you know? So I I would, I would think about it like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know that's a a great way to frame it. I mean, it made me just get energized and sound like, oh yeah, this is a good idea to take the company to the next level. (laughs) Definitely. that, That would be a great way to communicate. Yeah. So, well, listen, thanks so much. You're, you're, you know, uh, you give great leadership advice. And as I run my company, I'm inspired when I listen to you and the advice that you give. And you're an awesome advocate for women. So keep on, keep on. Awesome. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Let's go. I'm never going to have a better call than this. Hello. Oh, my God. I got you not bad. You cannot be a push. Nobody is going to respect you. We got to get going on that. Be comfortable when you're yeah. six. That's great. You're also stunting your life. I don't know if that was helpful. Mm-hmm.